Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Jabuka 27 in the 15-minute pool at ICC. They open with f4, let's play d5 against that. This is my standard way of playing. This is a reverse Dutch, basically. Let's play g6. I like to stay flexible and develop the king side against this line. Looks like they're going to go for like a reversed stone wall. Maybe not. g3, this is weird. Huh. g3 and e3 together, you don't see that too often. Well... I'll stake out space, so c5. Well, maybe now they are going for this stone wall. <laughs> really tough to say. Hmm. They've already put a lot of pawns on dark squares. They have every single pawn except one in a dark square. I'm just deciding if I can even play d4 and try to open it up already. But that seems kind of like an overreaction. Let's just play knight c6. Probably they'll go d4. Either that or they'll make a light square bishop move, like bishop g2. Okay, d4 is played. So I feel like they've already kind of lost a move in playing g3 because they don't really want to fee and ketter their bishop. That bishop belongs on d3. So let's play just knight f6. We'll play straight forward. I'm curious if they'll put that bishop on d3. Because if they do, maybe I retain options of like bishop h3, trying to mess with their development. Let's check Jabuka's stats for a second. All right, they played over 10,000 15 minute games, peak rating of 1908. Bishop g2. All right, let's just castle. They'll probably castle as well. So you notice this pawn is sort of floating right now. It's hanging. But if they take it, first of all, they get rid of like their spearhead pawn on d4. Um, I could play knight e4 in a bid to get it back. Uh, do I want to play b6 trying to go bishop a6? Or should I just play bishop f5 attempting to control the e4 square? I'm kind of leaning towards bishop f5. Hmm. Bishop f5, if they take knight d7, knight b3. Could be mildly difficult to get back the pawn, but I'm willing to roll the dice. I think I can do it if they actually do decide to take. And as I said, there's many players who are very hesitant to ever take that pawn on c5, so I'm kind of playing off that fact right now. I like the bishop on f5. Controls e4. Now that they have their bishop here, I might even put it in on d3. Okay, so he actually plays that move. So I was thinking knight d7, knight b3. Can even open up the position with e5 there. Maybe even e5 right now. That would be interesting. But knight d7 was like my um, first instinct right here. Knight d7, knight b3, maybe just e6 then. Looking to play like queen e7, knight takes c5, regain the piece. e5 looks good, but I think they can just castle. Although if they do that, like maybe queen e7. e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, pawn takes, knight g4 looks good for me. Knight f3. Hmm, tough call between e5 or knight d7. Ideally, I would have had this figured out beforehand, but... Um, <laughs> Like I said, I didn't really think they would take on c5, and I, I kind of just glanced at my options and decided that I had good play. In a tournament game, I would have probably spent more time deciding whether I could let them take. Let's play e5. I'm really curious how this move is going to work out. I think knight d7 was also good, but e5 puts them under more pressure. 
I don't think they want this this change in in pace of the game basically. So they just castle. Yeah, now I was thinking just queen e7 perhaps. Queen e7 b4 maybe. Or how about just knight d7 right now too? That's also pretty good. Yeah, let's do knight d7 instead. Well, knight d7, knight b3. Ah, queen e7. Forget about it. <laughs> then I can play rook a d8 and defend this pawn. There's a chance they'll play b4, but b4 really weakens c3. And I can already look at stuff like taking on f4 and then knight e4 discoveries. So I can't be worried about that. Yeah, let's just go rook d8 against that one. Back up our d-pawn, x-ray their queen. Later on, I might play knight d7 and then go take that pawn. But for now, I don't feel in any hurry to try to prove that I can win the pawn back. Oh, I can also go through e4 too. So that's another point of rook a d8 is I can go knight e4 to take on c5. Then I keep the rook defending the pawn. Like knight d7 would interrupt the rook's defense of that pawn. So this is a nice point too. You can maybe go knight h4, attacking the light square bishop. But I'd probably put it into e4. I'm happy to trade the light square bishops. No problem there. Let's just quickly play this move. Well, here he might take. Now let's do it. Looks like a good move. Rook f8. We'll put the ball back in his court. See if he'll play like bishop d2, which looks pretty weakening. Or if he'll crack and take on e5. What's he going to play? So I'm almost fully coordinated now. Just down that pawn. So he's had to go through um, a lot of hoops in order to hold on to this pawn even. His structure's a mess. Um, the knight is relegated to defending this pawn. The dark square bishop is an awful piece right now. It's not going to be good for a long, long time. Plays bishop d2. Okay, so this was kind of the opening I was thinking about for playing knight e4 or knight e7. Now I can play knight e7. And maybe knight e7 is better because if knight e4, knight h4 attacking the knight on e4, but if knight d7, knight h4, I can just play bishop back to e6, let's say, or bishop e4 even. Yeah, so let's do this. Just planning to regain my pawn. And once I take on c5, um, black must be slow, somewhat better. I don't know how large my advantage will be, but my position is great. Two pawns in the center. He still has all these pawn weaknesses. We're going to be better for sure. Okay, so they take. It looks like they're burning their bridges with that move, but it might not be so bad. Do I take on e5 or c5 first? I can do it either way. I'll probably take c5 first. Because I've got so many things aimed at e5, but only two pieces aimed at c5. So I feel like that's the pawn that I want to eliminate first, and I can win this one later. I'm thinking they're going to try to establish one of their knights on d4. Probably via knight takes c5, queen takes c5, knight d4. But I think I'll play bishop e4 on that case. Should be good. Yep, so they're going to do that. B4. 
lashes out instead. Queen back to e7 would be good. Normal. Queen b6 I could play, but is there any reason to keep my queen on the queen side? None that I really see. So queen e7, knight d4, bishop e4, bishop takes, f takes, queen g4. Knight takes e5, queen takes e4. Eh, nothing I really have there that crushes. Hmm, maybe queen b6 is better. Okay. We'll do that. It might be useful to keep the queen aimed at the e-pawn. Also, I want to keep the e-file open. So if knight d4 right now, I can do that bishop e4 move I mentioned. And then bishop takes e4, d takes e4, queen c2 or queen there to g4. I can take on e5, queen takes, and then play knight c4. That's kind of what I'm gunning for. He's going to try to chase me a little bit. Maybe bishop e4 first before taking this pawn. Yeah, let's put that in there. I'm not really scared of his queenside demonstration. It's not doing anything. a5, just queen back to c7, big deal. He plays that, okay. Could take on f3, but nah, we'll keep the tension. This is looking good. We're going to gather that e5 pawn and reestablish material equality, and we should be left with a better pawn structure. Lots of available weaknesses for us to attack. Also, their dark square bishop is eternally a poor piece. Develops the queen. I'll probably just take on e5. Knight takes e5, knight takes. Let's just say bishop takes. He if he takes e4, I take back. I'm hitting the bishop down here. I could also play bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, then knight takes e5. He takes here, though. I can play rook takes d5 then, though. Queen takes rook d8 is good for me. That's very good for me, because if he moves his queen back, I have rook takes d2 then. So there's lots of good options now. Maybe I'll do that. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes, knight takes e5. If bishop takes d5, rook takes, queen takes, rook d8, skewering the queen to the rook, or to queen to the bishop, rather. If they move their queen back to defend, I have rook takes d2, queen takes d2, knight f3, check. After all that. Kind of spices the game up, too. All right, let's do it. Knight takes e5 might objectively be better, but I get a lot of active play from hit, from this. Um, and my knight coming into c4 is a serious cause for concern for him. Yeah, I kind of figured he might fall for this. <laughs> so he does. All right, so now I can take, queen takes, rook d8. I think it's working. There's no indication it would not be. He's got to take it, otherwise it's just down material for nothing. And now this. We get to take his bishop next move. There's also knight f3 check right away, but I think taking the bishop's even stronger. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, okay, it probably is. Because now I have knight f3 coming next move if he moves his queen, like queen b3 or queen b1. Knight f3, king f1. If king h1, rook takes h2's mate. So let's say queen b3, knight f3 check, king h1. Knight takes h2, king g1, queen takes g3. King h1, queen g2 mate. Is one line. So he was a little inattentive with the tactics on this one. That's, uh, I kind of picked up on that a little bit just by the way he was playing it. Like a, he had a very loose position the whole time and the speed at which he was playing it, it didn't look like he was very concerned by it. So that's what kind of encouraged me to go for this. Well, actually, I, okay, against this one, I have check and then check. just, uh, Queen to c4 after king f1. He's trying to get in queen e8. But... So if king h1, rook takes h2's mate. King f1, I have queen c4, forcing rook e2 and checkmate. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Checkmate. Okay, so that's not an opening that white should want to repeat. I mean, f4 itself is fine and knight f3 is fine, but um, you can't combine both e3 and g3. That's that's asking for trouble. There's too many pawns on dark squares. You're going to be too weak on the other color complex, the light squares. Let's go back and have a look at that. So f4, d5, knight f3, g6. I just treat this like a reverse dutch. Basically, I just, also in the dutch, I prefer to develop my king side first and Fien Kettoing the bishop is a good idea because they haven't established a pawn on d4, so your bishop will have a free diagonal, very open diagonal. So e3, bishop g7, g3. I just went c5, grabbing space. Yeah, and now they went back into this stonewall setup. I just developed. Castle. So they can grab that pawn on c5 at various junctures, and they finally decide to do it. But I'm not all that upset about it because... They give up control of e5. Um, that d4 pawn was the figurehead of their structure. And I'm not sure they can really hang on to this pawn in the long term. If they're able to play b4 successfully without weakening c3 too much, then that's maybe a different story. But c3 becomes so chronically weak, and I have ideas like knight e4, my dark square bishop and knight combining to attack that pawn. So I just played e5. I was thinking about knight e7 too. And then knight b3 and maybe just like e6, trying to go queen e7 and take. But um, the game continuation was more enterprising. I see the engine also likes bishop d3, stopping white from castling. So e5, castled. Computer says knight takes is best. Knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, knight g4, hitting these weaknesses. I think I saw something like this. Then bishop e4. Yeah. This is somewhat similar to the game. I mean, they've got these weak pawns that they can only hope to hold for so long. I would play black here for sure. They castled instead. I just moved my queen. Again, the computer says they should take on e5, but here. Now rook e1. Yeah, that move probably wasn't so good. So if knight takes e5 now, knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, knight d4. It actually kind of likes white at this point. Uh, maybe because now, now they can respond with b4. Okay, so this might be a scenario where the b-pawn is coming up to, to land support c5. I still probably have some compensation, but you can see that the computer thinks white's a bit better. Yeah, mainly because of that b4 move. Like they've successfully moved their knight away from b3, so they freed up that pawn vance. Instead, they played rook here, and just did this, which I suppose gives them an opportunity to do the same line. Uh, take on e5, and then knight d4 after that. I should have played knight e4 myself. Okay, so going after the c5 pawn ASAP. Rook f8, bishop d2, knight d7. They took. I took on c5. Thought this was good. Now I was loving my position. 
b4, hmm, queen c4. Yeah, I was mainly looking at queen e7 and queen b6. The thing I didn't like about queen e7 was that after, uh, which line was it? Knight d4, was it? Knight d4, bishop e4. Take, take, I didn't like this move. And I thought they might be able to get away with it. Knight takes e5, queen takes e4. I wanted uh, this queen not on the e-file so that I could do a discovery. The engine says I can just do this with advantage. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. So it may not be that big of a deal where to put the queen. But um, I played queen b6 to keep it off the e-file. So here I played bishop e4, a5. Yeah. They're advancing these pawns, but I'm not sure it's accomplishing anything positive for them. So now I was just debating between knight takes e5 and bishop takes f3. And I kind of said that I thought bishop takes f3 might be um, not quite as good as knight takes e5, because this looks pretty nice. Also, like hoping for a trade here so I can get my rook into d3 and start attacking these weaknesses. His bishop, like anytime I can get down to a dark square bishop versus dark square bishop position, his bishop is probably still going to be a completely lame piece, so I can look forward to that with confidence. But I played the more enterprising move. Bishop takes f3 and then take on e5 with the knight. Yeah, and he fell right in for this tactic, but even after something like bishop g2, it's pretty bad for him. Knight c4, great square for my knight, hits d2, hits e3. If I want to eliminate d2 even, I'm probably doing it with the knowledge that c3 would fall, thanks to my queen and bishop behind it. Yeah, if his best move is bishop c1, it's pretty bad right here. But, yep, he played bishop takes d5, and you see how fast he played that too? 14 seconds. Yeah, just inattentive. You can't play that move that fast. Your position is very suspect. Like, black has wonderful coordination, and your pieces are kind of scattered, and your pawn structure is bad. If you're white, you got to be on high alert here. And this is, this is just blundering wondering the game basically but again as in my last few videos like most of my opponents blunders are coming in positions that are already bad for them so it's, it's really hard to criticize them like too much yeah here i thought queen c5 was the best chance um just biting the bullet and after the queen trade like trying to defend this position it's pretty thankless i am threatening knight f3 and white has just a bevy of weak pawns but that would have been the best chance at least but yep, they did this and evidently missed that. I mean, also they missed knight f3 check too. Um, if they had seen knight f3 check, they might have gone for this, but that fails for the same reason. Rook takes d2, and black should be winning. Definitely winning. Yep, and this is just over. Check. Mate in a couple. Check. Check mate. So yeah, overall, I think white was kind of done in by their opening choice. Um, g3, if they're going to set up this reverse stonewall dutch, formation. G3 should not be played. That pawn should be back on G2. They already have so many pawns on dark squares. They don't need to weaken their light square complex any further. Um, I played it okay. Like maybe not completely correct. Um, I was a little, a little uh, brash with giving them the C5 pawn, but just my experience in these structures, I know that white usually does not take that pawn. And even when they do take, it's like kind of outside their comfort zone. So I feel pretty good about it overall. I think system openings like this, I don't know if this is a part of this guy's regular repertoire or not, but you should, if you're looking to improve, you should pretty much stay away from system openings where you play the same like set of moves to start each game because you're not going to learn very much. Like if, if the reverse stonewall is this guy's main weapon, um, more than likely he's uh, probably stagnating and he's not like learning as much as he could because he's not challenging himself with... Uh, more interesting setups. He's just getting the same pawn structure every time and whatnot. But who knows? He This might be just a one-off thing for him. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.